Hello and welcome to another episode of Driveway Dudes. In a previous video I showed you how to twist and tape two coax cables together to make a strong joint and in this video I'm going to show you an alternative method which would be soldering two coax cables together and applying some heat shrink. So let's get started. And thanks to the magic of video we have the cable prepared the screen of breathing has been peeled back. This is your dielectric here and these are your center pins. Next step would be to fit the heat shrink into place. So we'll just slide that back there along the dielectric. I'm going to use the second one to go over the red one when the red one is in. So that will give us some added and extra protection. Once you're ready then you can just push the two pins alongside each other. Now not fully up the length and not touching the dielectric. And they're probably not exactly perfect. So what we'll do then is using a little adjustable wrench. We'll squeeze the two of them together and it'll hold them nicely in place. So as you can see, we'll be able to maneuver them back and forward ever so slightly. And I'll just zoom in there now so you'll get a better look. And you can see now we can go ahead and start soldering. Now we recently bought a little soldering iron. It's a little battery powered soldering iron as you can see, 6 watts and 4.5 volts. It's run by three AA 1.5 volt batteries. And we'll see how that works. And the solder I'm using is a flux solder. So let's get to it. Now with the little solder iron switched on and just waiting for it to heat up. We'll just, never used this before, so not too sure. Uh, it seems something's happening there. So we'll just run it along the cable and or the pins. So it we're doing the job. Wait for that to cool down. We can remove the little wrench and then do the other side. Right, that should be cool enough. So we'll just remove the little wrench Take that out of the way and just rest it there and we'll give this other side a little bit of solder. So again switch on the little soldering iron, just wait for it to heat up ever so slightly and there we have it and we should be able to run the solder along and get a nice fix and it looks quite stable there. Again wait for that to cool down a little and we'll see how good it is. Now that's cooled down sufficiently and we can move the little wrench and you can see there that's a pretty good solder. Give it a tug that's not going anywhere. Next step now would be to fit the smaller heat shrink and you can feel that it's just going over the pins and fitting over the dielectric. So if you have a little gas lighter or if you have a little heat gun by all means give it a go. So we'll just run that over, turn it around, run it again and before the black heat shrink starts to go just fit that over and again do the same thing. Now 
and there you have a nicely and well insulated joint. Next step now would be to push the braiding or screen back over into place. So just push it back and wrap it around as neat as you possibly can. Try and get it evenly spread around the, out, the outer side of the cable. So just roll it around with your fingers and try and get a decent coverage. It'll protect against outside interference. The same goes for the other side. Just push that back up into place and try and get it over the other cable or the other braiding I should say. Just roll it around with your fingers and try and get it as even as possible. And the next step would be then with some more heat shrink. Just go about an inch either side of the cable and push it on from the open end of the cable and push it up along. Just go ever so gently and press down and twist as you're putting it on. It should stop the other or the braiding from sliding back down along. Again, once we get it over and then have a feel, make sure it's about centered. And what we do then is with the little gas lighter, we'll do the same thing again. Again, run it along. Don't get it too hot. And turn it as you're going along. Try and get an even distribution of heat. And you can see then, as if by magic, the heat shrink will shrink. So keep moving it around and it will pull in nice and tight. So once the heat shrink has cooled down a little, you can, you can still feel it's a tiny little bit tacky. And uh, you're probably wondering why I used yellow. Well, the reason I used yellow was because I didn't have any black. But if you wish, you, if you have a marker or a black Sharpie, you can run it over it if you're color conscious or fashion conscious. But the important thing is it's made a good seal. It's pulled the screen and braiding into place. And on each end, it's a good seal, which may be suitable for outdoor use. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a comment, like, share and subscribe. And you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Blogger and Instagram.